हेलो प्यारे बच्चों वेरी गुड मोर लर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड एंड अ लिटिल बिट वरीड अबाउट योर फिजिक्स सो एज यू नो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यू ऑडियो बुक ऑफ फिजिक्स ऑल्सो राइट सो आपको अब फिजिक्स की भी सारी बुक्स ऑडियो बुक्स के फॉर्म में मिलेंगी एंड आई एम स्टार्टिंग विद चैप्टर नंबर वन ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ एनसीआर टी एंड यू विल गेट ऑल द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑडियो बुक ऑल विद explanation complete explanation so i'll explain the formula i'll explain the things and i'll explain the definition also so you will actually learn a little bit so what do you have to do just you have to listen it just close your eyes put your earphone or headphone and close your eyes and start listening right and while listening this book you have to just think about each and everything means you have to think in your mind that you are learning things and you have to learn anyhow right so this is the chapter number 1 electric charges and field i hope if you are watching it also so you can see on the screen so let's get started right so first of all this is the introduction and in introduction you have to just think each and every word right so all of us have the experience of seeing a spark or hearing a crackle when we take off our synthetic clothes synthetic shoes synthetic sweater and any other things and maybe uh, you also experience it when you just uh, get out of your plastic or bakelite chairs particularly in a dry weather also right so this is almost invertible with ladies garments like a polyester sari have you ever tried to find any explanation for this phenomena have you ever think about it why it's happening and what is the process and why the what is the science behind it another common example of the electric discharge is the lightning right lightning that we see in a sky during the thunderstorm i hope all of you might be aware of that we also experience a sensation of an electric shock many times i think either while opening the door of a car or holding the iron bar of a bus after sliding from our seat the reason for these experiences is also discharge of electric charges which is known as the frictional electricity i'll explain it after some time and this is the frictional electricity through your body also right which were accumulated due to rubbing of insulating surfaces you might have also heard that this is due to generation of frictional electricity static electricity or you can uh, hear a different names of that this is precisely the topic we are going to discuss in this and the next chapter static means is stationary means at rest means there is no motion right and the electrostatic you can divide this word electrostatic in two parts you can say this also electric plus static static also you can say right this is a static it deals with the study of forces a study of forces a study of field force field electric potential and many other thing also the static charges right so let's again move on aage chalte hain dekhte hain what is actually the electric charge you might be heard about something uh, like charge what are the charges you uh, might learn something or you will learn something uh, electric charge gravitational charge magnetic charge but here we are particularly talking about the electric charge okay so historically the credit history and the discovery of the fact that amber rubbed with wool or silk wool or silk point to be noted attracts light objects goes to tales of milesius greece around 600 before christ the name electricity is coined from the greek word electron just see notice the spelling of that electron meaning amber 
Many such pairs of materials were known which on rubbing could attract light objects like a straw, pit ball, bits of papers. You can perform the following activity at home to experience such an effect. Cut out long thin strips of white paper. I hope all of you have done with that when you cut the small pieces of the white paper and you rub the your plastic scale or the comb in your dry hair and then you uh, just get closer right then the small pieces of the paper starts attracting attracting towards attracting towards that particularly uh, you can say that scale or the comb and like that okay the tv screen also if you just bring these papers near the TV screen or computer screen, you will see that the strips get attracted to the screen also because it's charged. In fact, they remain stuck to the screen for a while. It was observed that if two glass rods rubbed with wool or silk cloth are brought close to each other, they repel each other. You can see in figure, you can see here 1.1a when he, this this part of the figure uh, this is a glass rod this is the silk thread and uh, there is a rubbing the same process have done with this glass rod so the glass rod and glass rod when you just bring them together they will repel each other right silk thread and plastic rod there is a different phenomena they will attract right glass rod and plastic rod they have the opposite charges glass rod got the positive plastic rod got the negative and here the plastic rod the negative plastic rod is negative so they will repel and they will repel also so if the same charges they will ripple if they have opposite charges positive and negative and point to be noted positive charge doesn't means more negative charge doesn't mean less positive here the positive and negative just to differentiate the two different types of the charges right one may be the positive another one is the negative it doesn't have the mathematical meaning of the positive negative here so this you have to learn right so positive positive and negative negative will repel each other means the like charges will repel each other unlike charges will attract each other i hope all of you got it okay you have to remember and now another thing that you should notice the two strands of wool or the pieces of silk cloth which the rods were rubbed also repel each other however the glass rod and wool attracted because they have the opposite charges similarly two plastic rod rubbed with the cat's fur repelled each other because they have the same charges but they can attract the fur because they have the opposite charges on the other hand the plastic rod attracts the glass rod see the 1.1 c this one right i have explained all and uh, repel the silk or wool with which the glass rod is rubbed the glass rod repel the fur right because they have the similar or the same kind of charges positive positive repulsion positive negative attraction negative negative repulsion so all of you have to remember this now let's move to the next para as you can see here if a plastic rod rubbed with a fur made to touch two small pith balls nowadays we can use polystyrene balls right Suspended by silk or nylon means insulating thread. The thread should not be conductor. Okay, I'll explain what are the conductors and insulator and all that. And you will learn. It's nothing special, right? Then insulating thread. Then the balls repel each other and are also repelled by the rod. A similar effect was found if pith balls are touched with a glass rod rubbed with a silk. A dramatic observation is that pith ball touched with the glass rod attracts another pith ball touched with plastic rod as you can see again in figure 1.1. As I explain all these parts of the figure A, B, C, D and E, F also 
So this is the same thing. Now let's move to the next one. Uh, these seem seemingly simple facts were established from the years of efforts and careful experiment and their analysis. And after all that experiment and observation, it was concluded after many careful studies by different scientists that there were only two kind of an entity which is called electric charge my dear students right this thing is known as the electric charge so i will define after that what is the electric charge and here let me tell you the actual definition the real definition the terminology of that electric charge so just listen it carefully or you can write in your copy also electric charge is the property of a substance or the material by virtue of which it can experience or can produce the electric field electric field as well as the magnetic field around it it can experience or it can produced also in a nearby space nearby region electric field as well as the magnetic field i'll tell you what is that electric field and that electric uh, that magnetic field but right now electric charge is a property right property of a substance property of the material property of the thing by virtue of which it can experience or it can produce right it can produce electric field as well as the magnetic field okay so now let's move ahead we say that the body is like glass or a plastic rod silk fur that we have talked about and pith balls are electrified the body has the charges known charges or positive or negative whatever the type of the charge it has but is known as electrified body they acquire an electric charge on rubbing the experiments on pith ball suggested that there are two kind of electrification and we find that like charges means positive and positive known as like charges negative and negative also known as like charges they repel and the unlike charges unlike means positive negative or negative positive right these are the unlike charges attract each other the experiments also demonstrated that the charges are transferred from the rods to the pith balls okay it is said that pith balls are electrified or are charged by contact the property as i told you right guys the property which differentiates the two kind of charges is called polarity of the charges polarity means positive as well as negative when a glass rod rub with the silk the rod acquires one kind of charge and the silk acquire the another kind of charge kind of charge means maybe positive or maybe negative these known as the kind of charges this is true for any pair of objects right they will get equal and opposite charges on rubbing they are rubbed to electrified now if the electrified glass rod is brought in contact with the silk with which it was rubbed they no longer attract each other they also do not attract or repel other light objects as they did not being electrified okay so why they are why they are attracting or repelling each other because of the electrification because on rubbing the two bodies if we rub two bodies with each other then the both the bodies will get equal and opposite charge if one is got positive another one is got negative charges okay and this is known as the electrification by rubbing and the bodies are known as electrified if they are electrified they are charged if they are charged so they can repel or attract another similar type of body means electrified bodies if they are not electrified they will not attract or they will not repel right okay let's move ahead now the next one is does the change charges acquired of uh, after rubbing are lost when the charged bodies are brought in contact what can you conclude from these observation it just tells us that unlike charges acquire by the objects right 
they neutralifies or neutralizes or nullify each other's effect if they are equal and opposite right therefore charges were named as positive and negative as i told you earlier positive and negative is just just the differentiation between the charges therefore the charges were named as positive and negative by the american scientist benjamin franklin okay so as per need you have to remember this name benjamin franklin okay they just give the given the name okay they have given the name positive charge and negative charge just to differentiate different kind of charge we also know that when we add a positive number to a negative number of the same magnitude the sum is zero this might have been the philosophy this might have been the philosophy right everybody should remember naming the charges as positive and negative by convention the charge on glass rod or cat's fur is called positive and that on plastic rod or silk termed as negative if an object possesses an electric charge it is said to be the electrified or charged body when it has no charge it is known as neutral or you can say electrically neutral i hope everybody got it so now we have some special thing here that might be important for you but it a little bit conceptual and upper level so i hope you should learn this unification of electricity and magnetism in earlier days or olden days you can say the electricity and magnetism were treated as separate subjects right electricity and magnet both are the separate in earlier days or in initial days or olden days but now you can see here the electricity dealt with charges on glass rod cats fur batteries lightning etc etc while magnetism described interaction of magnets iron fillings and uh, yeah iron filings and compass needles but in 1820 danish scientist ostrad right ostrad you will get this name in magnetism also ostrad experiment that a compass needle is detected by passing an electric current through a wire placed near the needle and after that ampere and faraday supported this observation by saying that electric charge is in motion that is the very important thing when electric charge is at rest it will produced only electrostatic field and when electric charges are in motion then it will produced electric field as well as the magnetic field magnetic field and moving magnets generate electricity the unification was achieved when the scottish physicist maxwell and clark maxwell and dutch physicist lorentz put forward a theory where they showed the interdependence of these two subjects means they are depends on each other they are interdependent which two subjects electricity as well as magnetism this field is called electromagnetism combinedly we known i know as this is known as electromagnetism most of the phenomena occurring around us can be described under electromagnetism virtually every force that we can think of like friction chemical force between atoms holding the matter together and even the forces describing processes occurring in cells of living organism have its origin in electromagnetic force electromagnetic force is one of the fundamental force of nature everybody has to remember this thing right electromagnetic force or electromagnetic force is a fundamental force of nature everybody should remember this then after maxwell put forth 
four equations that play the same role in classical electromagnetism as Newton's equation of motion and gravitation law play in mechanics. You also argued that light is an electromagnetic in nature and its speed can found by making purely electric and magnetic measurement. He claimed that time that the science of optics, optics means light, is intimately related to that electricity as well as magnetism. The science of electricity and magnetism is the foundation for modern technological civilization. Electric power, telecommunication, radio, television and a wide variety of practical appliances used in daily life are based on the principle of this science. Although charged particles in motion exert both electric and magnetic forces. In frame of reference where all the charges are at rest, point to be noted, if all the charges are at rest, then the field around it is known as electrostatic field. The forces are purely electrical. There is no magnetic force, means if charge is in motion, then only you will get magnetic force. You know that gravitational force is a long range force. Its effect is felt even when the distance between the interacting particles is very large because the force decreases inversely as the square of the distance between the interacting bodies. We will learn in this chapter that electric force is also as pervasive and in fact as stronger than the gravitational force. So by several orders of magnitude, okay, for this you can refer the chapter number 1 of class 11 physics and CRT textbook, right? Now let's move on. A simple apparatus to detect the charge is known as gold leaf electroscope, okay? So everybody should remember this. An important thing is that electroscope and known as gold leaf which detects that whether a body or if there is a charge or not or body is a charge or not charged or electrified or not electrified. Okay, so this apparatus to detect the charge in a body is known as gold leaf electroscope. You can see the figure, I'll explain each and everything. It consists of a vertical metal rod housed in a box with two thin gold leaves attached to its bottom end. When a charged object touches the metal knob at the top of the rod, charge show flows onto the leaves and they diverge because of the repulsive force or repulsion. The degree of divergence means this divergence less charge, this divergence more charge, this divergence more and this divergence is maximum charge is an indicator of the amount of charge. So that you can see here in this diagram or this figure, you can see here, this is the metal knob, okay? And here is insulating material like rubber, you can say, and here gold leaves are there. And this is a glass window, so that the window will, uh, that wind will no not affect this, uh, you can say the deflection. So if you put a charge rod, get in touch, if you touched it or in contact, a charge rod comes in contact with that, so the charge will flow from this charge body to this metal knob and from this metal knob as this thing is conductor, the charge will flow like this and then these two leaves get charged. And due to the same charges on it, they will repel each other and this repulsion angle theta can tell you or you can just uh, uh, make a sense that how much amount of charge is there because they have positive positive and there is a repulsion, pure repulsion is there. So the student can make a simple electroscope as follows. You can see take a thin aluminium a curtain rod with balls ends fitted for a hanging 
the curtain cut out a piece of length about 20 cm with a ball and one end and flatten the cut end take a large bottle then you can hold this rod and cork which will fit in the opening of the bottle a similar way make a hole in the cork sufficient to hold the curtain rod snugly slide the rod through the hole in the cork with the cut end on the lower side and the ball end projecting above the cork fold a small thin aluminium foil about 6 cm in length in the middle and attached it to the flattened end of the rod by cellulose tape uncharged right this forms the leaves of your electroscope fit the cork in the bottle with about 5 cm of the ball and projecting above the cork you can see it's a working model type a paper scale may be put inside the bottle in advance to measure the separation of leaves the separation is a rough measure of the amount of charge on the electroscope to understand how the electroscope work use the white paper strips we used for seeing attraction of charge bodies Fold the strips into half of that you make the mark of fold. Open the strip and iron it slightly with mountain fold up as shown in this figure. You can see the thing here in figure 1.3 A, B and C. You would notice that two halves move apart. This shows that the strip has acquired charge on ironing. When you fold it into half, both leaves have the same charge, hence they will repel. Because if positive, positive, they will, they will repel. If negative, negative, so they will also repel. The same effect is seen in the leaf electroscope on charging the certain rod by, you can say, curtain rod, sorry. Rod by touching the ball and with the electrified body. Charge is transferred to the curtain, certain curtain rod and the attached aluminium foil both halves of the foil get similar charge and therefore repel each other the divergence in leaf depends on the amount of charge on them let first try to understand why material or bodies acquire charge you know that all matter is made up of atom or molecules although normally materials are electrically neutral they do contain charges but the charges are exactly balanced means the number of positive charges equal to the number of negative charges in any neutral object okay as you know electrons have the negative charge and protons have the positive charge so that negative positive are exactly equal to each other and atom is electrically neutral so that the body is also electrically neutral the forces that holds the molecules together, the forces that holds atom together in a solid, the adhesive force of glue, forces associated with surface tension, all are basically electrical in nature, arising from the forces between charged particles. Thus, the electric force is all pervasive and it encompasses almost each and every field associated with our life it is therefore essential that we learn more about such our forces so to clarify a neutral body we need to add or remove one kind of charge when we say that a body is charged we always refer to this excess charge or deficiency of charge or deficit of charge in solid sum of the electrons being less tightly bound in the atom are the charges which are transferred from one body to the other a body can thus be charged positively by losing some of its electrons similarly a body can charge negatively by acquiring some or acquiring or gaining some electrons as you know electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged in an atom electrons and protons are equal so the negative and positive are equal so they have equal or 
न्यूट्रल नेट जीरो चार्ज और न्यूट्रल ओके इलेक्ट्रिकली न्यूट्रल मीन्स इक्वल अमाउंट ऑफ पॉजिटिव एंड निगेटिव चार्ज सो नेट चार्ज यू कैन से जीरो एंड इट इज नोन एज इलेक्ट्रिकली न्यूट्रल सो वेन वी रब आ ग्लास रॉड विथ सिल्क सम ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम द रॉड आर ट्रांसफर टू द सिल्क क्लोथ ओके सो दिस इज अ न्यूट्रल ऑब्जेक्ट ए एंड दिस इज अनदर न्यूट्रल ऑब्जेक्ट बी ओके so they have equal number of negative and positive charges so that you have to remember and suppose some electrons are transferred by rubbing some electrons are transferred from a to b okay so a have a deficiency of electron because initially it has equal number of positive and negative now some electrons are transferred from here so it has some excess positive charge so now a body becomes positively charged as it has excess of electron and electrons are negatively charged so b has equal amount of negatively charged so by rubbing both a and b are charged but the same amount suppose it had it has plus q charge and then it will have minus q equal amount of positive and negative charges it must have but combinedly the total charge is zero so that you have to remember thus the rod gets positively charged and the silk gets negatively charged no new charge is created in the process of rubbing it just the redistribution okay rubbing or frictional electricity everybody should remember this thing okay that by rubbing only there is redistribution of charge only there is redistribution of charges okay no new charge is created see here also the number of electrons no new charge is created in the process of rubbing also the number of electrons that are transferred is a very small fraction of the total number of the electrons that body have also only the less tightly bounded after that uh, we will call it the free electrons electrons in a material body can be transferred from it to another by rubbing therefore when a body is rubbed with another the body is gets charged and that is why we have to stick to certain pairs of materials to notice charging on rubbing the bodies okay so this is all about the frictional electricity and how the charges are transferred so this is the first part of your audio book electric field and charges after that uh, in the next part or the second part of that we will discuss we will learn and i will explain a lot of things about conductors and insulators okay so don't miss the second part of this and in that we will explain conductors and insulator and i also tell you about the charging by induction there are number of types of the charges or the method of the charging this is the induction i will explain and also gave you the proper idea about that you have to just listen listen and listen and you will learn a lot of things by listening only and then we'll uh, talk about in the second part also the properties of the electric charges okay so stay healthy stay awesome keep practicing keep listening and just keep smiling so i am now going to signing off from here and will meet you again in the next part bye bye all the best and good more learning once again